Hello class, is everyone here? I'm Professor Don Vonikin, and this is Cosmic Significance 2012. If anyone gets sick from astral travel, be warned, this class is taught in the minds of other people and throughout the time stream. So keep your barf bags handy, yeah? Yeah! Of course, we can look into their minds, but don't interrupt. Observe common civility at all times. Everyone, follow me! Space we go! Ah, and we descend through the morning twilight down, down into St. Pete Beach. The chilled sea breeze confirms it is February 29th, 2012, 6.55 a.m. The young blonde woman meditating there on the beach, that's Marvel S. Day. As you can observe, Marvy is going out of her mind. Breathe in, the waves come ashore. Breathe out, and those waves retreat. In, out. Um. Oh, it's that darned follow phone. Why did you follow me here to the beach? Oh, well. Hello, Liza. Hi, Marvelous. What are you doing, meditating? Uh, for crying out loud, Liza, the same thing I do every day at six. Meditating. Now I'm going inside for some coffee. That's what I thought, Marvy. Why do you take the phone with you? It follows me. The follow phone floats along wherever you go. You know that. I thought you were going to get one. Sister, it's you who sells silly cell phones by the seashore, not me. I don't need an electronic tether. All I need is love. What time are we going to get at those ends? Oh, uh, hang on. The usual 13 o'clock? What are you doing? Nothing. Mmm, good coffee. Uh, Marvy, what's that sound? What sound? Marvy, are you making another aluminum beanie? No, it's a brainwave deflector. It keeps the voices away. <laughs> Right. Oh, Marvy, last week you thought the horoscopes were written just for you. And the week before that, you were convinced there's a colony on Mars. There is. And the week before that, you were sure that Hollywood is run by the Illusionati, and the squirrels outside your window were talking to you. I'm surprised you're not worried that the follow phone is bugging you. Oh, gosh, do you think it is? Crap. No, Marvy, I'm sure it isn't. You know what? Maybe your tin beanie will work, after all. You think? Yeah, it just might keep those crazy ideas in your head. Duct tape might work, too, applied below the nose. <laughs> it says right here on a Wackopedia, a tin enclosure approximates a Faraday cage. Faraday? Is that one of your ants in a cage? Sounds about right. Efficiency depends on the thickness of the skin. Girl, your problems are skin deep, all right. How about we focus on those split ends and get back to your roots? That's all you really need. Okay, see you at one. Mwah. Love ya. Kiss, kiss. Okay, class. Now let's visit the Ivy Hale College where Dante Del Fuego is a sophomore TA in the physics lab. It's a common belief that no two things can occupy the same space. For example, my hand cannot be in the same place as this lab table. Ah! However... In some cases, molecules can occupy spaces between other molecules. Proof that two objects can indeed occupy the same space. Sharon, take these two beakers and fill them both with water. In the first beaker, we will put sand, which raises the water level until it overflows. Sharon, go ahead and pour in the sand. But that'll make a mess. We have a towel. Go ahead. Time for the towel. Okay. Now take this sodium, plain table salt, and add it to the other beaker. The salt will dissolve and... That's not... Don't worry, it won't overflow. But... Oh, here. Uh, give it to me. See? Nothing to worry about. Hey, university. Ah, uh, uh, class, I was actually a professor at Hale when Dante was there. In fact, at the very moment, I was down the hall talking to Zacharias Smith. I'm telling you, Smith, 
I had it. Not again, von Icken. In my hands, solid und real, an anti-Katheria with markings in Egyptian, Chinese, and Toltec. <laughs> now it's gone, too. Someone got it. Who could that be, Don? You really think someone is sabotaging you? <laughs> Have you told the Dean? Of course not. But how else can you explain the missing jade necklace from the dig in Copan? Or those charred murals in the Ethiopian pyramid? Or th Are you wasting time with theories? You never say there's no proof. You must admit to the possibility of alien influences on ancient cultures. <laughs> I wouldn't stake my scholarly reputation on the gamble that aliens built the pyramids. Well, I do. I'm telling you, the proof is out there. If you say so, Mulder. I mean it, Smith. And next time I will get the agent responsible for... Not, Not again! again. Dr. Smythe, there's been a... An explosion, yes, Sharon, I'm coming. Marvy, let's bring the highlights to a sunny gold. It totally goes with your dreamy green peepers. I see you on a great throne, deep in the jungle, surrounded by tattooed tribesmen who dance and sing in the firelight. They worship you, their idol. Actually, they'd be holding me hostage, tied to a spit over a fire. But who is that hacking her way through the jungle to save me? <laughs> oh, it is Liza Croft, Raider of the Lost Salon. <laughs> You know, Liza, if you ever sold that cosmetology school, you could totally open up a day spa in a travel agency, plan a trip to paradise while getting a pedicure, or get a pedicure in paradise. The tribesmen stop their dancing and they say, what? You're a goddess to these people and all you ask for is a pedicure? Okay. While we wait for the color to take, why don't you tell me what you saw or read that has you hiding under a silver beanie? Lizards, they want my brain. What? The signals I'm receiving? Aliens, lizard people. Marvy, you don't really believe that aliens are trying to control your mind. Moguls manipulating the media is one thing, honey. But what you're saying is, well, knocking futz even for you. It's not just the media, it's more direct. At least for me. Well, I know that, Marvelous Day. What I don't get is why on earth you think it's lizards. Ugh, creepy things. P.U. Are you sure you haven't had an overdose of Rowdy Roddy? I came here to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> you laugh, but that film wasn't far off. There is nothing hidden which will not become manifest. It was far out, all right. Out there like you. Why don't you just relax? You know why. I have to save the world. Not that again. The great legend of the Day family. I don't know why your parents told you such bedtime stories. My brother was supposed to be the one to do it. He was going to save humanity. I know. But he died. I know, honey. He fell overboard when you were in the Caribbean as kids. I know. So now I have to do it. I have to. You? But you can hardly take care of yourself. I know. How can I ever? <laughs> oh, now, Marvy, don't do that. Come here, honey. Hugs. That's better. I'm sorry. I know you're scared, Tinkerbell, but I assure you nobody's trying to get in your brain. And, sweetness, you don't have to save the world today. Okay? Now, I have to go teach a 5 p.m. class on follicle implants. Leave this in for 20 minutes and rinse it out until the water runs clear. Okay, lovey? Kiss, kiss. All right, bye. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, in time for my favorite radio show. Oh, I'd hate to get up. So let me just take off this tinfoil and stretch my brain waves out to the switch. And... There, and now the tuner. I just use my mind to change it. 9 to 7, 90, 88.5, and turn it up, y'all. And now it's time for the Sonic Circus. This week, Sam and Sal find themselves in an elevator. Wow. 
Well, Sal, we might be here for a while. Yes, Sam. We're all alone together. Uh, yes, Sal. We are. Sam. Sal? Sam. Sal. Sam. Sal. Sam. Sal. Sam. 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 Sal. 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 Oh, Sam. Oh, Sal. Sam, yes. Oh, yes, Sam. Oh, oh, God. Marsha! What? <clears throat> uh, if you'll pardon me for asking, what did you just hear? What do you think you heard? I think you heard an actor playing Sam. And an actress playing Sal. And the rest was all in your head. See what we can do? It's so easy to reach into your mind. And make you see. What we want you to. See? see? We are the Sonic Circus. And you have been warned. Now, class, never mind that pesky circus. Focus on Dr. Smith's office. Dante has just arrived. Sit down, son. Dante del Fuego. You certainly live up to your name. This is the third time that you've blown up the lab. Unless we count that time in the cafeteria. Dr. Smythe, that was an accident. Uh, because you did not do things in the traditional manner. Dante, you are the brightest student Hale has ever seen. But you don't belong here. What? Don, you're like a son to me. You're the only student who understands my lectures. That's because you make everything so convoluted. I'm surprised anyone can follow you at all. I do it on purpose. You do? I do. I want the average student to tune out. Well, why? It's all so fascinating. Inca and Hindu parallels, genocide in the Americas, and the related metaphysics. Dante, I don't teach history. I reveal it to those who are worthy. I don't think I understand. Now pick up that crystal ball on the shelf and look at it closely. What do you see? It is everything, Professor. And it is nothing. Invisibly collecting the entirety of all else, yet offering only reflection in return. It's a container of hope, a symbol of unity, and the sign of all bad things to come. A metaphor, a teardrop, a punctuation mark, perfection and emptiness. The whole, yet a precise slice of individuality. The ancient past and utter destiny combined in the essential, universal form, and... Yes? And it's just a crystal ball. Exactly! Dante, my boy, that was wonderful. Most people, 99.92% precisely, uh, to be exact, would fail to see the grand potential in that object. You did not just answer my question. You opened entire realms of discourse and opportunities for exploration. Oh, you are destined for great things, my boy. You will be a leader to make Alexander and Adolf blush in shame. A leader? Uh, like, uh, president? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're going much higher than that, indeed. Uh-huh. Dante, pack your bags. You're going on a ship. A cruise? Uh, but midterms are in two weeks. No midterms for you. You've been granted an honorary PhD. There. Congratulations. Now hurry. The Imperial Sun leaves Fisherman's Wharf at 5 a.m. Honorary? Uh, professor, but... Dante, I you have 12 hours to get ready for the rest of your life. Pack as if you are never coming home. Now, go. Uh, yes, sir. And goodbye. I have cast fire upon the world. And see, I am guarding it until it blazes. <laughs> okay, class. Let's visit Koga Tanake, a scurrier acolyte at the Syrian monastery. Now, down this hallway to the left, there he is. No, that's not a bathroom. All the scurriers wear them. Now, now hush. Tanaka is about to graduate, and his last test is to hold his breath as long as he can. It's been 5.5 minutes so far. Let's listen to his thoughts. By the gods, my lungs are burning and my face must be purple. But I can hold my breath longer than anyone. Just recite the mantra. The exaltation is your life in the void of space. You may breathe. Nom nom nom. Uh, Tanaka. You may breathe. In the void of space? <sighs> I did it. Num, num, num. Show me the stone which the builders have rejected. 
That one is the cornerstone. Oh, what? Father Kenikan? Uh, congratulations, Tanaka. You have done well. You are now a scurrier. But you will not be assigned to Minister of Oids as you have requested. What? I have a perfect score in scripture, history, and 12 astrotic dialects. On top of your class in 8 martial arts. But a different path awaits you, Tanaka. What is to become of me, Father Kenikan? Nom nom nom. You are to protect the light of all days. Report to the inverted pyramid in St. Petersburg, Florida, to receive details on your assignment. Ad Gaudia. Thank you, Father. I will do my best. Ad Gaudia. Nom nom nom. Nom nom nom. And now to the fabulous subterranean mansion of the Knight family not far from Hale. Sixteen acres of living space, hidden in plain sight under a national park. The girl you see in a silk bodysuit with diamond brocade is Stormy Knight. Notice how she pouts and fiddles with the knob of her mind eraser pistol, hidden under her back as she talks to her fiancé. Now let's listen, shall we? So, Josh, what do you think of our new home? Stormy, love, I knew your family had money, but this place is... Wow! 16 acres underground, 900 bathrooms, 342 bedrooms. And this one is mine. A plexiglass ceiling and a real lake over your bed? The best kind of aquarium. Look at that television. Holovision? Babe, why are you showing me all of this when your parents have forbidden us even seeing each other? Has love finally won out? Oh, Josh, I do love you. I wish it had been enough. Princess, come to the chapel, Stormy. The Pope has traveled all the way from Europe to bless the bride-to-be. <gasps> oh, you brought him here. You were to dispose of this turtling. Oh, Mommy, I don't want to marry a Martian. I love Josh. Now, sweetie, comments like that are unworthy of a strutty nobility. Unification is the Astratis' primary goal, and you are instrumental in achieving that goal. You should be honored to fulfill such a destiny. Yes, Mommy. What are you doing? Darling! Stormy! Now you won't have to wish you never knew me, Josh. Where am I? Who are you? Wait, who am I? Good girl. I shall have him sent to the homeless shelter. You'll be fine there. Come, ruffian. Now, oh, Stormy, put away that toy and freshen up for the pontiff. Five minutes, Angel. Yes, Mother. Oh. Oh, Josh! <laughs> I was dreaming. I know it was a dream. The darkness was inky black. I could hear Marvy in my mind. It really was her in my dream. Marvy, is that you? Oh, everything is spinning. Flora? Fauna? Is, is that you, Meriwether? Marvy, is that you? All I see is forest. Oh, here I am. Oh, Philip, kiss me quick. No, it's me, Liza. Oh, Philip, I'm so tired. I'm just going to curl up on this cloud in the aurora. Wait! Come back! Don't go! Ow! Where did these thorns come from? Marvy! Ow! Marvy! I woke up safe in my own bed, but I was scared sick for Marvy. I tried to call her follow phone. Hello? I'm not really here. Am I? Beep! I drove as fast as I could over the bridge. As I crossed Tampa Bay, I remembered Marvy going on about secret underwater magna tubes. Ha! I sure could have used one of those to get to the beach, because when I got there, her house, the entire house, was gone. Hello. You look like you've seen a ghost. Who are you? And why are you in a bathrobe? My name is Tanaki. I'm looking for Marvy Day. I'm her friend, Liza. Marvy used to live here. I mean, her house was here yesterday and now it's just gone it's just a beach it looks like it has been empty for years but how let's ask the neighbors num, num, num. hello uh, how can i help you two please ma'am um what happened to the house next door in that empty lot oh it burned down in, in the middle of the night last night oh no 
That would have been 19... Oh, Lordy, 50 years ago today. There was a girl, Mavi. Oh, yes, the blonde. Rather strange, but just a sweet girl. Do you know what happened to her? She died in the fire, poor thing. Oh, oh my God. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, to God, you. Uh, how's that? Uh, I mean, have a nice day. <laughs> oh, my God, she's dead. I don't think so. Most likely they shifted the house back in time. They what? That sounds just like the kind of crazy thing Marvy would say. Not at all. It's just a simple 39 procedure. Uh, 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 what? Uh, not important. Do you want to find your friend? Yes, of course. I believe she has been kidnapped. Oh, uh, no. For ransom? Oh, worse, I'm afraid. She's probably on a ship going to... Going on a long trip. The Imperial Sun will be leaving Miami in two hours, and we are going to sneak you on board in a Copra Cola container. Once on board, you should be able to find your friend. Miami? We can never get there in two hours. We can catch a magnitude behind the ice cream shop in Central. Ten minutes to Miami. Num, num, num. Oh, so there really is a tube line. You're coming with me, right? I'll get you aboard safely. But then I have to check in with the boss. Now let's hurry if you want to catch that ship. Dear Journal, I am on the most remarkable ship or my name isn't Dante Del Fuego. Two weeks ago, I left Fisherman's Wharf on a skiff with three Himalayan monks, six Eskimos, a retired movie star, and a janitor. As the sun came up, it gleamed right through the glass hole of the Imperial Sun. The ship is not just made of glass, it's in the shape of a giant crocodile. Only the ridges and eyes stick up out of the water. But here is the most extraordinary part of all. Each section of the ship has its own environment. The monks went to a place where cold, thin wind blows tattered prayer flags, and the Eskimos actually have ice fields. In the croc's head, a jungle of palm trees lined the glass skull like teeth, and the Yanomami tribe sleeps in a flossing of hammocks. My own cabin is large enough for a tribe, but I have a kitchen and even a hot tub. The ship has made stops in America, Peru, Easter Island, and Australia, taking on more strange passengers as we go. The captain has announced that we're almost to Diego Garcia, but I still don't know why or what awaits us there. Damn that, Dr. Smythe. Don't worry, Journal. I'll keep you informed. Now I wonder what I should wear for dinner. Ah! It's a girl! In my closet? What are you doing in here? Are you a stowaway? Sort of. Uh, I'm Liza. I'm looking for a friend. In the closet? Why don't you just come out? Yeah, I uh, know. I mean, uh, I think she's on this ship. Who? Marvel S. Day. Marvelous who? My friend Marvy. Her whole family has these crazy names. Her father is Caesar D. Day. Her mother is Gloria S. Day. Her cousin is Stormy. Wait, does she have an Uncle Peyton Day? Probably. She's missing, and someone told me Smythe put her on this ship. You know Smythe? Do you? I'll say. But I don't think he's on board. Oh, but yes, I am. Dr. Smythe? What's going on? And why are you pointing that glowy gun thing at us? Oh, Dante, you must watch your company, my boy. I don't think I understand. Let's go down the hall, left through the door. Okay, now down the gangplank to the dock. This facility at Diego Garcia looks like a normal fish processing plant for a fleet of fishermen, but it's also the perfect cover for a fleet of saucer ships. Yes, you're going much higher than you think, boy. How much higher? Mars. Mars? Mars? Is that where you're taking us? Us? I don't think so, Missy. Oh, do watch your step. You don't want to fall into the fish shredder. Dr. Smythe, (laughs) uh, don't push her. Dante, I love Mars! What a tragedy. These fish processing plants can be so dangerous. <laughs> Why did you kill her? Oh, God. There are pieces of her everywhere. All over my shirt. Ugh. Oh, Dante, the sheeple of the planet should not concern you. You will see when you arrive at Tharsis. Now, get on that saucer. It's about to take off. Planet? You mean Earth. And what if I've changed my mind? Well, I still have my blaster. And you would also taste delicious to the sharks under the shredder. Now go. Oh, and have a nice day. Well, that's all for today, class. In our next class, we will explore Mars with Dante and find out what happened to Marvi. Don't be late.
Cosmic Significance 2012 is written and directed by Dewey Davis Thompson and Elizabeth Brackman and is a production of Soundstage Radio Theater and Pirates and Angels Productions. Full credits and web extras online at CosmicSignificance.com. 